Hi, in this next video we're gonna take a look at the Color Edge CG223 hardware calibration. Um, that's more specific sounding than it really is because that means it covers hardware calibration for all the ISO monitors. Um, the hardware calibration means that we will actually interact with the hardware that's driving the display to do changes to its setup so it matches what we want and what we need in colors better. And then the information to get those settings will be stored inside the display itself. So rather than just having a software profile and having to do all your settings on your display and those two not communicating, a hardware profile means actually those two interact. So by set selecting that profile you also select how your hardware settings are set up. So that's an advantage over the software profiling that we can do with a Color Monkey or with this device um, and the i1 profiler software. So let's take a look at how we're going to start. We need to launch software. In this case we're going to use the free color navigator from um, ISO. It is uh, free software that you can download from their website. And it takes any device to do measurements. So that's an advantage. You can use an old i1, a display, or a pro, a color monkey, a spider, anything that hooks up to a USB port basically and is capable of measuring displays can be used to do hardware calibration on your ISO display. If you have one of the top end models, the sensor to do the measurements is built in to your display and you don't need an external device. Although slightly debatable, you might still um, need a device because the sensor that pops out on the more expensive models is always at the edge of the screen. And not too many screens are completely consistent on the edge and center. So you prefer to look at the colors in the center most. Uh, but maybe those monitors are great in having um, a balance in every side of their uh, on every spot of their display. Uh, we'll take a look at that at a later point. For now, let's take a look at the Color Navigator software. There are three target defaults that are already preset. Photography, printing, and web design. Now each of those have different um, settings to start with, different default settings. So the photography, for instance, now works with 100 candela per square meter and a color temperature of 5500. And if you go to web design, that changes to 80 candela per square meter and 6500. So both the brightness and the white point are set according to a specific um, type of workflow. You can luckily also create your own by saying create a new target. And then you can manually enter the settings so you can have it refined to whatever you want. We're going to select that, enter manually, and click on Next. First question we get is what kind of gamut would we like to use? If we want to use the entire gamut that the monitor has, we go for monitor native. If we want to stick to a certain known color space, uh, you can do that. You can, for instance, have this display just display sRGB colors. You can limit the colors to that range. Um, normally I'd say go for the native and then just set your profile accordingly in your software uh, to do a, a proofing. So we're going to do monitor native and click on next. Next question we get is brightness. By default 80 candela per square meter. That may be fine where you are because that depends on your ambient light. But with 80 candela the screen is not very bright for me, so I'm in a studio with lots of lights here, so I'm going to ramp it up to 120 candela per square meter. That's the maximum value you can set without overriding the normal range. The white point I will choose, I will not leave at D65 because I go to print with lots of my images, so I choose D50 because D50 means 5000 Kelvin, uh, which is the color temperature of a viewing booth at a printing press. Um, the color that has been used to do the profiling on a press 
and um, the color that is in the viewing booth lights of a printing press. So um, I stick to D50 when I go to print. Clicking on next, we get to the black level of the monitor. If we want to limit the black monitor to match that of a different kind of device uh, or to match several displays which are not equally black, we can set that. So we don't want to do that right now. We're going to uh, go to the minimum black that this one can produce, the deepest black. Click on next. Then next is the um, uh, RGB gamma. Early days you had to choose between 1.8 and 2.2 depending on the platform you were using. Nowadays both platforms, Mac and Windows, use 2.2, so just leave it at that. Then the next question is priority. We can either have a priority for gray balance or for contrast or go in the middle. So gray balance means that your gray balance will be perfect but you might lose some contrast. Contrast means that you get maximum contrast but the gray balance might shift a little and standard is in between those two so I prefer to go for that one. Clicking on next. Then we have to name our target, our, our ICC profile. So we're going to just call this one uh, CG223W. So that's the name of the display. And we can customize the profile if we want. Um, we can update the profile every time we adjust it, uh, or just this once, or every other week or month or whatever. And um, we can set the uh, type of profile, so we're going to use a type 4 profile, and we can use a tone curve or a gamma curve or a parametric curve for um, the way it's doing the levels. Well, I stick to uh, LUT, uh, it's the default one, it's not a big difference in the results when you choose the other ones, but um, this is one I'll choose right now. Um, next step is to finish. We're obviously not finished yet because we didn't measure anything yet. So we're just going to begin the measurement. And the measurement device we will use is, as said, the i1 Display Pro. So the latest display profiling hardware from X-Rite. But again, you can use any device to do this, as long as you hook it up to the USB port. Click on next, and we have to place the device on screen. Like so. Well, let's make it fit better. The cord can be adjusted so it fits exactly the right space. That's worked better. Click on proceed. And now the Hardware tells the display to go up in brightness and we've got something. We need to change the device around because we've now be measuring ambient light. So we need to rotate the device around. Sometimes I forget that. Click on OK and click on proceed again. So the hardware now changes to the brightness level that we requested to get the desired, uh, desired candela per square meter of 120. We don't have to adjust any settings on the display. It's all been done by the software that's driving the hardware from ISO. So it's now adjusting the monitor brightness. And after it's done that, it will go through all the colors it needs to create a profile. So that means it goes through a gray balance from black to white, and it also does the primary colors. Doing this once is not very sensible because your display will not remain constant throughout its lifetime. It is recommended to do it at least once a month. It doesn't take very long. It only takes you to start it. You don't need to do any complicated stuff here. So um, I'd say do it at least once a month, once a month to keep it uh, more consistent. And on the lower right, you can see that it's now adjusting monitor gain. So it's adjusting gain as well. Um, and you see those little um, measure points coming to the LAB chart that's there. Um, 
to me that's just a, a toy because it doesn't really tell you anything. You just see some dots appearing in the LAB chart and you can see how far it is measuring. Um, to me they could have just had a percentage bar and say what they were doing that would be equally useful. So you see more black points now coming added to the chart. They're hard to see maybe on the video, but getting to some great levels here. Oh, forgot to tell you, you need to do this not straight after you've switched on your display. You have to wait at least like half an hour before you start doing this because your display will warm up and when it gets to the operating temperature that's when the colors will remain consistent. When it's cold it, the colors will be different from its normal operating temperature. So it's uh, getting close to being finished because it's going through the basic colors now. And it's done. So I can take the device off. And here is a list of my target and result values. So my target was a brightness of 120 candela per square meter. I got 119.4. Well, that's okay. The minimum black level is 0 0.13 and the contrast ratio is 924 to 1. The white point itself should have been 5000 is actually 49.93, so that's fine too. Uh, the gamma we set at uh, the gamma we set at 2.2. Um, and the display has been used for 200 hours now um, and it's been measured with the i1 Display Pro. We can now start validating this profile. That means, let me finish and keep that on, that means that we can check if the profile we have now makes the display behave within certain specifications. And to do that you can choose from different uh, validation targets which have basically different levels of um, number of patches and accuracy required. So all the common ones are in here. I'm gonna for speed reasons stick to the basic RGB one because it's quicker and it's just boring to watch. But if you want to match a certain viewing standard you can have this monitor be verified that it does achieve those standards. So Stick to basic RGB for now and you choose a higher level one if you need to. So we're going to measure again. We're on the i1 Display Pro. Have to hook it up again. And we click proceed once more. So what it now does, it is with the profile installed, because that's already created and installed onto my Mac, it will now measure colors 32 patches of color and it knows what color it should get because it's been profiled and it will measure the color it did get actually by measuring the color again and from that it will generate a result uh, with delta E as they call it. Delta E means uh, two spaces in an LAB, uh, two points in an LAB space are a certain distance from each other and that's delta E. So if your luminance is one value off and uh, your A and B are 4 and 6 off, then the distance in three dimensions will be the delta E. So this takes um, slightly less time than do the actual profile and it ensures you that you do have a profile that is valid. So you don't just guess that the profile is right, you know that it's within the standards that you chose. It's ready, so let me take the device to measure off again. And when I say finish, I can see the result. So my maximum delta E was 1.1, my average was 0 0.25, and my white is off by 0.23. So that's fine. Any delta E that's below 3 is acceptable with proofing. So it is fine, you won't see a difference. A delta E in a saturated color of 1, you will not be able to tell even when you compare them. A delta E from 3 in a gray balance, you will definitely see. 
uh, but a delta E in a different, in a uh, normal color, that is within range of proofing standards. So you can save this report if you like, um, and you can have a look at the details, which shows you just all the values that we did, the target values and the measured values, and from that the delta E values. So we're going to close that. So now we see that we have a new profile here that's now active. And it's also installed into my system software because if I go to my system preferences and go to my display and go to color, then the name of the profile just typed in is actually the active profile here and that is installed in the software part so it is in library causing profiles where all their profiles remain um, so it does automatically create a profile for your uh, Mac to use the quality of the profiles is quite good because it does control the hardware of the device and that is easier to get a good result with than just doing it through software so uh, that's a good way of getting a profile there are some other advanced things you can do. You can import or export target values. So if you have more targets you want to reach, you can import or export those. Um, you can uh, create an ICC profile for a tablet or even an iPhone. So if you, for instance, create graphics that will be viewed on an iPad or iPhone, you could create a profile for your ISO that will mimic the color behavior of an iPod or iPad, uh, iPad or iPhone. Um, of course, it won't be exact because, just like displays, iPads are not all identical. But uh, as there are no no uh, other sliders but a brightness slider on um, an iPad or an iPhone, it won't be very much off, and it will at least be better than not being. Um, emulating the correct device at all. So it means if you want to get the best quality on iPad graphics, you could use a profile in your ISO to get the uh, color to match as far as possible to the average iPad. Uh, emulation allows you to emulate the behavior that you would get um, using a specific ICC profile. Yeah, so that means you can uh, have it be a, a proofing device for your colors. You can of course also do that in applications like Photoshop or InDesign because you can set your proof target and as long as you have a display profile in there the software will do basically the same thing as you do here. The other thing you can do is have a light booth adjustment. That means you can measure the light that's coming out of your light booth, your viewing booth, and adjust your light on your display so the brightness level is the same on both. That makes it easier to get the same result. That is the basic way you can use the Color Navigator uh, software. Um, should you have any additional questions on this or have any problems or want to see more of the features, please let me know. Um, hope you found it useful so far and I'd like to thank you for watching.